Hi everyone! Welcome back to our channel! So for today, we thought of sharing with you what are the experiences of my husband, American husband, the first time he visited Philippines and what are the culture shocks and surprises that he experienced during that time. So husband, Glenn, <laughs> what are your experiences? Can you walk us through? Yeah, well, we arrived in Manila Airport in the evening. We got there and we were kind of tired from the long trip from the air flight from, the Phil or from America to the Philippines. And the first thing you kind of notice is the size of the people. They're shorter than the Americans and they're also petite, they're skinny. They're not kind of chunky like the Americans are. <laughs> That's the first thing you notice. The other thing I noticed that was nice is the exchange rate for how many pesos you get for a dollar. It's like, at that time it was 51, 52 pesos per US dollar. So that was nice, we exchanged currency there at the airport. And we took a taxi ride from the airport in Manila to Makati, and that was about a 30 minute, 35 minute car mm -hmm. ride. And I didn't have the Grab app at that time. I didn't have Wi Fi on me yet for, until the next day. So I paid about a thousand pesos or 20 US dollars for the taxi service from there to the Euro Hotel we stayed at in Makati. And I like the price we got at the Euro Hotel, it was about $30 or 1500 pesos mm -hmm. per night. And that was for two people and two buffet breakfasts. So that was really cheap. And then after that, we met Esther for lunch that next day. It was on her lunch break from work. And I don't remember, it was by the, by the it was by where you work at. I yeah, RCBC, RCBC, RCBC Tower. Tower. Yeah. It was nearby and I had Sisig, I remember. And it was like two fifty three dollars for a meal with a drink. And it was really cheap. So right away, mm -hmm. I just knew the prices were so much cheaper for food, for everything there in the Philippines right away. That was my first experience that everything's kind of a lot cheaper than what I was used to. And other than being cheaper around here, I think I remember that you experienced something or you witnessed something when it was when you were riding the taxi from the airport. Oh, yeah. the hotel. My mom and I, we seen there was a brawl on the street <laughs> and this was probably like at, I think it was maybe midnight, 11.30 p.m. And we just seen two guys and then like three guys getting in on a, just a brawl, out all brawl, and we seen on the middle of the street driving to Makati. That was kind of surprising. We didn't see that anymore. That was the only time I've seen violence when I was in the Philippines. But we were like, what did we get ourselves into? We kind of thought right away. But that's the only time we witnessed that. And then that afternoon after we met Esther, we went to the, was it Glorietta? La Glorietta. Glorietta mm -hmm. Mall just to kill some time until Esther got done with work to meet us, meet up with us again. Mm -hmm. And we were in like a Walgreens, we call it in the United States. I don't know what you call it, kind of like a drugstore type of thing. Mm -hmm. And we were in that store and I seen the corner display. There's like whitening cream lotion for your skin. And I was just like, I've never seen that before. <laughs> And I asked the clerk lady there, young, she's maybe early 20s, the young, young lady. I was like, is the people buy that here? Is that common? She's like, yeah, it's a good seller. So I was, that kind of surprised me. You don't see that here in America. People want to get a tan and get a little mm -hmm. bit of color. It makes them look more healthy, they think, to have a little bit of color. Mm -hmm. So that was something that was surprising. And then we did go to the Starbucks that mm -hmm. evening with Esther and the prices at Starbucks are pretty similar to what they are here. So there's not much of a discount at the Starbucks. It's still mm -hmm. kind of a little more expensive for coffee. Mm -hmm. I remember there during that time when um, I met you, I was just, you were just using the Wi-Fi uh, in the airplane, right? And in the hotel. Right. Because I remember before we separated in where we met first yeah. during, my, during my lunch break, I told you to buy a SIM card, right? No, just a pocket Wi-Fi. A pocket Wi-Fi. I got a pocket Wi-Fi mm -hmm. there. It was a Globe, is, a, is the company that it's from. Yeah. And I think I paid maybe 30 US dollars for that pocket Wi-Fi and load on it. And mm -hmm. it lasted me the whole, well, I was there for two weeks. So it lasted me those two weeks, that pocket Wi-Fi. The other thing is you got to charge it, keep it charged to get the internet or the mm -hmm. Wi-Fi from it. Yeah, so I just brought that because if some of our viewers are um, going to visit their girlfriend in the Philippines for the first time, I would recommend that doing either doing that or buying a SIM card because SIM card is uh, really pretty cheap in the Philippines yeah. so and then they will just load it like a oh, thousand pesos like yeah that. it's not it's pretty mm -hmm. cheap yeah mm -hmm. and then the next day after we were there 
in Makati that next morning we took the bus from what's the bus line called again victory victory line, line bus from there from Manila up to Baguio City in the summer capital of the Philippines the mountains up there and what's that province called Benguet uh, Benguet yeah Benguet mm -hmm. I forgot Benguet and it's five hours to six hour bus ride depending mm -hmm. on how many stops they make and the route they take and the bus ride ticket, do you remember what that costs, Esther? Is it like five, six? Five hundred. Like yeah, five, five, like ten U.S. dollars for. Yeah, but that is in 2017, so price has are gone up. Kind of gone up. Yeah. yeah, so that's really cheap. And you see the, the Carabao, how do you pronounce that again? Carabao. Carabao. <laughs> the water buffalo, you see them like they're on the, by the roads and you get to see them. You see all the mm -hmm. rice fields. It's pretty scenic drive. So that's really cheap. And then we stayed in a hotel. We had an Airbnb, if I remember right there. And not an Airbnb. We what booked was it? in like it's like a third party um, website. I forgot the name and if it's still existing. But I remember we booked a hotel. But when we arrived there, yeah, we got confirmation that said our hotel <laughs> was booked. And we got there at the place and we showed them. They said, well, you already filled it up. And then like, we got confirmation saying mm -hmm. that we paid for it online already and that we're getting it. But then they just brought us to a different place that was just as nice mm -hmm. yeah. and spacious. So that worked out just fine. Yep, and that is one thing that I would really comment with people back in the Philippines, in the mountains, people there are really nice people. Yeah. So oh, yeah. even though it was actually the fault of the third party not really the owner of the hotel the hotel owner still accommodated us and um since they're fully booked they try to find a place for us yeah to you know to stay for the night because we arrived there how it's We're like late, late, late 11 11 p.m maybe yeah it's kind of late now and they give us like a whole you know floor with how many i think there's a three bedroom three bedroom two bathroom two bathrooms and then one bedroom is kind of I, as far as i remember it's like four beds that can that each bed can sleep two persons yeah so and i think they said they used it for college students mm -hmm. it was like a, a dormitory for a group of college students if yeah. i remember right that's what the owner said they used it for yeah so could could yeah. for so that surprising owner. things going on to other surprising <laughs> things uh, what I was surprised is Esther paid for a buffet lunch. We met up with her family, and it was your mom and was it three your siblings and your sister in law, mm. your niece, and my mom and I. So how many is that? Eight, nine of us. Yeah, something like that. And it was like twenty three dollars, twenty four dollars mm. U S dollars to feed all of us. And I was just like, wow, that's cheap. I was surprised. <laughs> that is in good taste. That is one of the most popular restaurants. What's it called? The, good taste. Yep, in yeah. Baguio City, and usually tourists there local tourists or foreigner that is the uh, place that we usually recommend because of the quality of the food and the quantity also that's why if you can try to visit um this place you will see like a big building with a lot of floors yeah we took the elevator to get up yeah. to the top floor of the of the restaurant is it restaurant each level or? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a huge restaurant mm -hmm. and then Another surprising thing I've seen is there's a lot of old people that are beggars mm -hmm. in Baguio. You didn't really see many kid beggars, but you see old people asking for change and handouts. Mm -hmm. And I remember there's one spot Esther said to make sure we got all of our personal property secure. I think if you had a backpack on or something, yeah, just be careful so someone that. doesn't rob you. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it. Esther said she's heard stories. Mm -hmm. So we want to be prepared and try to be <laughs> safe. But I felt really safe there in Baguio City. Mm -hmm. It was nice. And the other thing is they had smog. I noticed there was a lot of traffic with smog. And then another surprising thing I noticed, this was going up to Baguio and in Baguio, there's so many motorcycles and tricycle bikes. They just weave in and out of traffic really fast. <laughs> and it looks so dangerous like they're going to hit someone. But it's common there in the Philippines. They don't turn their blinker signals on either. They just go weave in and out mm. and in and out. And it's it makes you a little nervous that they're gonna get hurt but uh, that's just the common practice there in the Philippines yeah so for if for someone who is gonna visit Philippines uh, I would just want to comment on what uh, Glenn said regarding the safety It's pretty safe on some areas in the Philippines I know you have maybe watched or read a lot of uh, crimes in the Philippines but there are places like Baguio that is pretty much 
um, you know, I cons still consider it safe. Although, uh, when it comes to you know pickpockets, so there's yeah. people a lot doing that. That's why I recommend Glenn that when you go to Philippines, look poor. <laughs> Yeah. Look and, normal. Yeah, another difference I noticed we were in the restaurant, we went to the mall in Baguio. We went to eat at a pizza restaurant. I remember the waitress asking us what we wanted, but she was talking so softly and quietly that I couldn't hear her. I had to tell her to speak up a couple times. And that's common in the Philippines mm -hmm. where they talk very softly and you just got to listen really closely to hear them because you're used to hearing lar loud, louder volume here in America from speech. And there it's really soft. Yeah, that is as also one of my adjustments when I got here. People always tell me to speak louder. And because culturally in, in the Philippines, the louder your voice are, it's more like disrespecting. So that is actually kind of um, cultural difference why people speak like that yep. back home. Yep, and then after we were up in Baguio, we went to the museum up there, Bed Cab. Cab Museum, that was really nice. I'd mm -hmm. recommend to see that. We went to Miner's View. It's really scenic there. It's Mines View. Mines View, it's called, mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, Mines View. And you bought something there. Back scratcher. Not only back scratcher, what? the leather. Oh, I bought leather belts there. <laughs> and they had leather wallets. Wallet. I still have that wallet. I bought wallets for my siblings as gifts to bring back. And that was nice and cheap. They're all leather. And so how much is that? I forgot remember? what it was. It was like six dollars per wallet. Mm, yeah, I believe so, that. So <laughs> like three hundred fifty pesos, three hundred pesos per wallet, and they're all leather, yeah, they're... custom. They got nice embroidery on mm. there. They're durable. So that was something that was cheap there. That you know everything in the Philippines is a lot cheaper usually than it is here in America. Mm. Do you remember that time that uh, mom and you I bring you in this park where there are horses? So how do you find that experience? Oh, we went horseback riding. I think my mom enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. We went mm -hmm. up through Baguio and then a horseback up the mountain. I don't know how long that lasted. I forget. Was it like 45 minutes to an hour? And What can you say about our horses? No, they're, <laughs> they're, eight, eight, they're Asian horses. So they're not like a Bronco here or like a Mustang here. Mm -hmm. They're half the size, so they're small. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how, how they handle that, having the big American people on there, but they handle it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then after we were in Baguio, we went down to Manila and booked a flight to go over to Boracay Island, mm -hmm. which is a really pristine island if you visit it. And it was, the hotels are cheap. I think we spend between $25, $20 dollars a night to $40, $45 dollars a night. We were there for, was it three or four nights? I forget. Mm -hmm. And the thing I really liked the best is we went on an island hopping excursion and it was like a thousand pesos per person for five hours and they got a buffet lunch with that too. Mm -hmm. So it's really cheap and they had shrimp, breaded shrimp, like deep fried shrimp. And I'm not a big shrimp fan, but that's the best shrimp I've ever had was there in that Boracay island hopping excursion. And one funny thing is they had red pepper sauce with red peppers in there. <laughs> and I tried to, I ate like half of that pepper. And after that, my whole body just started sweating. So I jumped in the ocean to try to cool off, but it didn't really help. It just burned and burned. <laughs> so that was kind of a fun experience, but I wouldn't recommend to try it. Mm -hmm. And then the beaches in Boracay, it's just the finest sand you can ever yeah. see. It's just pristine. The sand's pristine. It's really fine white sand and it's, if you haven't heard of it before, it's one of the most popular tourist islands in the whole world, Boracay, especially for Asia. Mm -hmm. And I remember there, um, because my husband is a mid Midwest guy, it means he's used to chill, you know, chill atmosphere. When I uh, bring her him in the Boracay beach, Boracay is actually known for um, nightlife. So it's kind of popular that there's a, already a lot of tourists going there. So I was thinking that my husband will like the side of that be, that island that is has a lot of people. Yeah. But good thing there's other side of that island that's kind of more chill. Yeah. So if you are kind of that person, there's actually an option for you too to go to that island and just go to the other side yeah if you and want. then another cultural difference i experienced there in boracay is it's on the beach it's all beach and the filipino women don't wear bikinis they wear like a full <laughs> swimsuit in america they wear bikinis mm -hmm. you'd see korean tourists 
there and they would wear bikinis and some Australians too and they would wear bikinis. Mm -hmm. But the Filipino people, they don't wear bikinis. They're more conservative on what they wear, which that's, that's fine with me. But that's just a little bit of cultural difference. Yep. So like me, when I go to the beach, I usually just wear um, lifeguard. It's like a life. I think, yeah, that's called lifeguard. They use when uh, people use when they go surfing. Yeah. And some people also use leggings. So imagine they're fully clothed yeah. even when yeah. you, they swim in the beach. Yep. And then another thing I forgot to mention this when we were in Baguio, but we had a, went to a, a music bar. And we mm -hmm. ordered the beers and the San Miguel beers are like one dollar fifty five pesos per beer. So they're really cheap here in America. You're paying four or five times that mm -hmm. price at a bar for the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember that time that you were so uh, you were happy with the performance of the person who is singing. Is yeah, that the they time? had really good musicians mm -hmm. there. It was a husband and wife singing. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. And you um, buy bought them a beer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, then after that, when we get back from Boracay... We went to Manila and went to... The Intramuros. Old, Intramuros. Yeah. That would have been... Was that the old capital of the yeah, Philippines? Yeah, it's like... Uh, there are a lot of old Spanish-style buildings in yeah. the place. And there, we went to a museum there. It's really nice. And mm -hmm. that's where I would see a surprise. I've never seen this in America. But there in the Philippines, they would have children go around mm -hmm. begging the tourists for money to come up yeah. to you and give me something for food or give me money and I didn't see I've never witnessed that at all here in America so that's a little bit different and I had one young Filipina girl she came up to me and just punched me in the stomach <laughs> and then asked me for money to get my attention she punched me in the stomach so I was like whoa and I, I didn't give her anything because I figured that she was getting panhandled by someone else to try to get money out of me and then she followed us after that down the block. We went into like a 7-Eleven, a little bit mm. of a convenience store mm -hmm. after that. And then what do you, uh, what's your comment when I bring it to Jollibee? It's also that day. Oh, Jollibee, yeah, we went to Jollibee. <laughs> That's like the Filipino McDonald's. It's mm -hmm. good. It's good food, it's cheap, it's not expensive. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, it's cheaper than even McDonald's here in America, but the portions are a little bit smaller, like mm -hmm. the burgers and things are smaller than what they have here in America. But it's really good food there, I liked it. Mm -hmm. So with all these um, experiences, oh, before we jump up with, we wrap up, I remember, I bring you to Mall of Asia, right? Yep, we went there. <laughs> so what is your comment about comment about the malls in Philippines? Well, that one is the largest one there in the Philippines, the Mall of Asia. I remember we went there and we got a steak. We ate like a steakhouse and that was delicious. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like $18, $19 per person, but it was a nice steak, a full meal. And that was really good. Mm. Actually, Philippines is known for having a lot of big malls. It's like an attraction for even locals because when you go to Philippines, it's kind of hot, right? Yep. Experience that. So people, when they feel like it's hot and they don't have air condition, their option is go to the mall because they uh, have free walk air through the air yep. conditioner there. Yeah, you can just stay there the whole day just to have you know. <laughs> yeah. That feeling of you know escaping the heat around the yep. Philippines. So with all these um, experiences you have there, what would you s recommend or advise for foreigners that will be visiting the Philippines for the first time in, for them um, because they might you know, visit their fiance? Yeah, or... it's nice to have internet Wi-Fi so get either a SIM card mm -hmm. or pocket Wi-Fi as soon as you can. You can usually pick that up at the airport right away. They have vendors there for that. So that's convenient to have. Get the Grab app. Or another what, thing what's is the other app that they use? Joy Ride. That's yeah, the newest. That for taxis. So if you if you're using that app, it's set in stone what they're going to pay. They're not mm -hmm. going to try to overcharge you because yeah. that's one thing that you experience as a tourist. If you're a white guy, they're going to think you're there and you got money. So mm -hmm. they're covetous. I mean, a lot of people are covetous. They try okay. to get what they can get out of you. So that's my experience. <laughs> I don't want to say that all Filipinos are like that because they're not. I think it's more of because it's uh, in the city. It's common yeah. in the cities, you know. Yeah. So well, I just... shouldn't say that because when I was in Baguio, this is a different trip. I mean, mm -hmm. I was trying to give the taxi the taxi guy a tip, 
and he won't even take a tip. I was just yeah. like, oh boy, you don't, you're working for hardly much money yeah. and you should need a little tip, won't hurt. Yeah, actually the uh, people in Baguio, they are very nice, even the taxi driver. When I had to pay uh, my bill and the guy doesn't have any change, he even um, give me, it's like he even allowed me to pay lesser than my actual yeah. bill. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just in Metro Manila that you might be experiencing that. That's why it's very highly recommended that you use the Grab app or the Joyride app. So you already know how much you're going to pay. Gonna yeah. pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that sums up my experiences, mm -hmm. my first experiences and surprises with the Philippines. If you got surprises about the Philippines that you'd like to comment about, we'd appreciate hearing from you. Mm -hmm. So thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye. Bye. -bye.